Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on sound waves. The topic of this video is sound as a pressure wave. And we want to know why is a sound wave often referred to as a pressure wave and how are compressions and rarefactions associated with pressure? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed the many ways we can categorize waves. If you need to review the video, I've left a link to it in the description section of this video. One way to categorize waves is to look at the manner in which the particles move within the medium relative to the direction that the waves move. In this animation, we observe that the particles of the medium are moving up and down as the familiar pattern of crests and troughs move from left to right. And in this animation, we observe that the particles of the medium are are moving back and forth left to right and right to left about a fixed position as the wave moves from left to right. In the first example that we saw, we would categorize such a wave as a transverse wave. The particles of the medium are moving perpendicular to the direction of wave transport. The result is that we would form crests and troughs and we would see the familiar pattern of crests and troughs moving from left to right perpendicular to the direction that the particles move. In the second example, we saw an example of longitudinal waves. In a longitudinal wave, the particles of the medium vibrate back and forth parallel and anti-parallel to the direction that the wave is moving. We don't form crests and troughs, but rather we form regions of space within the, say, the slinky where the coils are pressed together and other regions where the coils are spread apart. This is known as a longitudinal wave. A sound wave that is traveling through a fluid such as air or water will travel as a longitudinal wave. The particles of the medium will vibrate back and forth parallel and anti-parallel to the direction that the wave is moving. Longitudinal waves consist of compressions and rarefactions. Here we see a still frame of a longitudinal wave set up in a slinky. In the areas marked with a C, those are compressions, and the coils of the slinky are densely packed. The areas marked with an R are rarefactions. Those are regions where the coils of the slinky are less densely packed. So compressions are high-density regions, and rarefactions are low-density regions. When you have a transverse wave moving through a medium, you see a pattern of alternating crests and troughs. But for longitudinal waves moving through a medium, you see a repeating pattern pattern of alternating compressions and rarefactions that propagate outwards from the source. For fluids such as air, density is related to pressure. Here we see an equation that might be familiar to you from your chemistry studies. It's known as the ideal gas law equation or the Pivnert equation. P pressure multiplied by V volume is equal to the number of moles in multiplied by the ideal gas law constant R multiplied by the Kelvin temperature T. I can take the equation and divide both sides of the equation by V and then rearrange it to look something like this. The N divided by V ratio is not the density, but it's very close to the density. The N is the number of moles, and the number of moles is the mass divided by the molar mass. So into this equation, I can substitute the ratio of M divided by molar mass and then do some rearranging so that the equation looks something like this. The mass divided by the volume is what we know to be as the mass density, or simply the density of the gas sample. And so from this equation, we can conclude that the pressure is related to the density. And the pressure will be greatest where the density is greatest. So when you see the familiar pattern of compressions and rarefactions propagating outwards from the source, you can identify those compressions or regions of high density as being regions of high pressure. And similarly, you can identify those regions that are called rarefactions as low density or low pressure regions. A sound wave consists of alternating regions of high pressure and low pressure propagating outwards from the source. For many students, the absence of crests and troughs is quite bothersome because we're used to thinking of a wave as looking like the sine wave on our calculator in math class with crests and troughs. But this is never seen in any diagram of a sound wave until we begin to think about fluctuations of pressure as a function of time. In this diagram, we see the familiar pattern of compressions and rarefactions at the top. 
A pressure sensor placed any given distance from the source would detect variations in pressure as a function in time, and the pressure would vary as a function of the sign of time. As shown in the bottom part of this diagram, when a compression reaches the pressure sensor, it would detect a region of high pressure. One half cycle later, when a rarefaction reaches the pressure sensor, a low pressure would be detected. In another half cycle later, when a compression reaches the microphone, a high pressure would be detected. The microphone or pressure sensor would continue to sense alternations in pressure that vary as a function of the sign of time. So while we don't see any crests and troughs in a picture of a sound wave, we know that a sound wave has a pressure that varies as a function of the sign of time. And that's why we refer to a sound wave traveling through air as being a pressure wave. So at this time in every video, I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps to help make the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are four resources that you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each one in the description section of this video. You have a simulation page that will convey some ideas that words could never convey. You have two activities that you can do, a Minds on Physics mission and a Science Reasoning activity to help you make the learning stick. And finally, if you need to read something, there's a whole lesson on the topic of the nature of wave in our tutorial section. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.